Hey, I'm Katie, and it took a pandemic to get me back to YouTube. I hope that you're well, I hope that you're keeping safe and doing whatever it is that you need to do. Obviously, the past few months have been really trying for everyone for a lot of different reasons. I was sitting in lockdown and I realised that maybe I could come on here, talk about music, ideas and share that with you and maybe make the world a tiny bit less bad, even if it's just for me. So today I'm going to be sharing some records that I've been listening to during lockdown in the UK. Before I get into that, if you enjoyed this video and you're not already, then please do remember to click subscribe before you leave the video today. I make content about music on vinyl and generally overanalyze everything. Since Record Store Day was postponed this year, I've been keeping an eye on their website to see if there are other ways that I can support record stores during this time. I was inspired to make this video when I saw that they started a series called Isolation Vinyl, where record stores are sharing their recommendations for what to listen to at the moment. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out the great recommendations there and also more ways that you can support local record stores. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy my selection! The first record that I wanted to share with you is my classic record, Françoise Hardy's self-titled debut LP, also commonly known by the name of its title track, Tous les garçons et les filles, which was originally released in 1962. If you've watched some of my previous videos, then you may already know that I'm a big fan of Yeah Yeah music, which was a style made popular in France during the 1960s. I've been listening to quite a lot of Yeah Yeah music during lockdown. Artists like France Gaulle, Brigitte Bardot, and Jacqueline Taieb. I can close my eyes and I'm immediately transported to France. I'm walking down a Parisian street, I'm on a beach in the south of France, or I'm sipping wine in a vineyard. Just every Every cliche you can imagine, I'm imagining. So this is definitely an escapist record for me. I ordered this copy directly from the label Light in the Attic when they were reissuing several of Françoise Hardy's early albums. The cover art alone is so iconic, but it's Hardy's vocal performance on this record that keeps me coming back to it. There's a joyful innocence that doesn't feel naive. Unusually for a Yeah Yeah artist, Hardy actually wrote a lot of her own songs and brought a fresh songwriting perspective to a male-dominated scene. The new album that I've selected is The Big Moon's latest release, Walking Like We Do. This album came out in January, which already feels like a decade ago, but there we go. I pre-ordered this copy from my lovely local record store, Resident Music in Brighton, and because they are absolutely awesome, they also got the band to sign my copy. This record is pressed on orange vinyl, which really complements the overall vibe of the album and its artwork. I love so many songs on this record, but I think I am going to have to make a review video for this. From the blend of yearning and celebration on your light, to the defiance of take a peek, this is gorgeous indie rock. I was lucky enough to see the Big Moon live before all of this when they supported Bombay Bicycle Club, and their energy on stage was just as incredible as their brilliance on this album. Every time I listen to this record now, I'm reminded of that gig and that one day I'll be able to go out to another. The third category is a kind of joker, random album that I've seen some people share as well. Just a record that doesn't quite fit into the other categories, but brings a lot of joy to lockdown. So for this I've selected When I Think of You in a Castle, which is the debut LP from American indie psych band Post Animal, whose members include Joe Keery, who is probably best known for playing Steve Harrington in Stranger Things. When I Think of You in a Castle was released in 2018, and I ordered my copy directly through the band's Bandcamp page, which is another great way that you can support artists. The pressing is so beautiful, it's marbled magenta. Their music is expansive, yet chilled, yet energetic. Listening to this music just always puts me in this really great relaxed mood. So I've added two extra categories because why not? We all need more music in our lives. The fourth category is a Record Store Day release. I've chosen a release from last year's Record Store Day, which is Santa Gold's I Don't Want The Gold Fire Sessions. I Don't Want was originally released in summer 2018 and then was released for Record Store Day 2019 
pressed on black and yellow swirled vinyl. The record itself is such a joyous and free exploration of music. There's this brilliant blend of mainly dancehall with ska, grime, pop, and even a bit of punk. I love Santa Gold's vocal experimentation anyway, but I feel like there's just such a sense of freedom and ownership on this record in particular. Perhaps because it was originally released as a surprise mixtape, so there was less pressure and constraint on it than there would have been on an album. Written primarily in 2017, Santa Gold confronts US politics directly on this album, perhaps most clearly on the album artwork, but I feel like there's a subtle political through line that goes throughout the entire record. I find it really interesting how the heavy dancehall influence gives this social and political commentary a sense of ease. Like it's a sunny summer's day, but you're allowing this desire for political and social change to just gently percolate through your mind. The fifth and final category is a single or seven inch that I've been spinning a lot through lockdown. I've selected a single by El Musa, which is lime green on the A-side backed with Rosa and Henry. I got this record in one of my flying vinyl subscription boxes in 2018. El Musa is El Louise Berges, an artist, musician, and songwriter. She's originally from Australia, but is now based in Lisbon. Her style is nostalgic and reminds me of Flo Morrissey, that kind of romantic folk style. So one of the reasons that I really wanted to recommend this record is because the track Rosa and Henry is one of the most beautiful songs that I have heard in a really long time. I was listening to this the other day because I dug out a pile of seven inches to listen to while I was reading, and this just stopped me in my tracks. It's six minutes long and begins with an instrumental section that is just haunting and melancholic. I have to admit, I was reading a Murakami novel at the time, so there may have been some kind of artistic alchemy going on. But if you do have time to indulge in a bit of nostalgic melancholy, definitely give it a listen. So those are my isolation vinyl selections. I'd love to know what you think of them and also what you've been listening to. So do let me know in a comment below or over on Instagram. If you have the means to, then I'm sure you're probably already supporting your local labels, record stores and artists. I guess I'm just thinking of it like I really want these all to still exist when this is over. So Record Store Day is now going to be split into three different days and the releases have kind of been divvied up between them. I've also seen that there's going to be an event called Love Record Stores on Saturday the 20th of June. There are a number of special releases as well as some of the records that were previously scheduled to come out on the original Record Store Day and you'll be able to purchase those via the independent record stores online platforms. I'll pop a link in the description as well so that you can find out more. If you'd like to hear from me a little more regularly then probably the best place to follow me is over on Instagram. My main account is Katie Wawa and my vinyl specific one is Vinyl Wawa. Otherwise thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!